perimeter drain is set. Back filled with gravel all the way around. Nice and pretty. We had to move half of this, and by we, I mean my father in law and his bobcat did that. But perimeter drain work is done. Now it's time to start cutting and stacking. <laughs> of the Nudura forms is in. We don't have it glued yet. Uh, we're gonna do the second row and then we're gonna foam everything down, glue this so it's not 100% straight, but man, does that look good. We almost have a foundation, folks. Concrete comes in two weeks. I think we'll be plenty ready. Uh, long before then, so who knows? Take care of some other projects around here. Look at that. Just look at it. So good. That footer too. <laughs> yes. Loving it. Love what we're doing other than working in the rain there's my father-in-law we're scribing on a line on the bottom so we're gonna cut this off and that's gonna be basically the slab do an angle like this this is getting cut ooh, down to about here and then we're gonna put some uh, form work up three inches above that we'll put some foam in between there uh, so then the slab the wall will only get poured up to that one inch spot and then the concrete slab is going to come up over the top of these with some foam here because this is all going to be um, heated so we don't want to heat up the outside world so we're going to insulate it keep it where it belongs to catch you up because I've really only done a bunch of time-lapse videos up to this point <clears throat> we've just been hustling against daylight or the lack thereof it's getting cold less daylight so uh, the walls are essentially all up we got the bracing around the entire perimeter with the exception of this wall here uh, this allowed us to get into this area that we otherwise would not have been able to get into very easy so uh, I'm about to put this all together, make this wall whole, and then we'll put the bracing up on the outside of this, put the uh, planks on, and essentially we'll be done. we got to run some penetrations through for electric, water, sewer, um, through the, the wall cavity here, and then we'll kind of be done. All right, we got to put these verticals in also, so these will go drop oh, into the wall here like this. Lost you, and they'll kind of stick up like that. We'll tie those off, and they run down the length and overlap our other verticals. Too hard to see right there. Uh, so, add a little vertical shearing strength to the wall. I'm gonna do a little more detailed footage of putting these last pieces together. We should capture all the pieces: uh, the first course, the second course, this stuff called the 
dural wall form lock it's called different things in different places uh, the placement of the rebar the placement of the clips it's super easy very satisfying because it just goes very quickly so follow along <laughs> putting that webbing that you saw me install all the way around the perimeter Kyle here. Uh, but we got the bracing up we got all the planking up so we now have scaffold all the way around the perimeter from we go to pour the concrete that's cool and we're starting to lay penetrations so I got electrical conduit for our power coming in a conduit on the back side for uh, water pipe coming in be able to fish through because all this is going to be buried and then a slab of concrete over the top so if we don't put it in now that's probably not going to happen later and then after that we got to plan our septic uh, water waste drain i wanted to take just a moment to talk about these uh, icf forms that we're using out back here for the uh the basement walls uh, i have zero experience with these before this uh, I've read up a ton from the Nerdura website. I watched uh, a boatload of videos that I found online and YouTube, so I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. I just want to share with you uh, the system and how it works, and that's it. So <clears throat> you've got these blocks that are uh, really 8 feet long and 18 inches tall. They weigh nothing. They have this webbing inside of there that looks like this on the top and bottom. So rebar goes inside of these here, uh, and then there's some mesh that goes on top, and these little Lego plugs that you literally just stack them on top of each other, and you pop them down. There's these little clips inside of here that lock up together, and man, is it impressive how sturdy this system is without any concrete in it or anything. I mean, we were just up there jumping all over and walking around, and impressive very very impressive so uh, the gist is uh, you take two blocks you butt them up together or corners you take these little clips and they lock in to these little designated sections here so if you can see right there right so they just clip right in and they hold together I mean that is sturdy already uh, so the first course you put down and you just take some spray foam out of a can and you put it underneath it here right to your footer and that glues it right down and these things don't move they don't move you can just about kick them I mean obviously enough force or a saw or something and they'll come right up but they're sturdy at that point point. and then you just start building on top of them smacking them all together whacking them and you got to hit on each of these little black nubs here that are associated with the plastic and these lines, you can see them right here. Uh, that's where there's a plastic stud. And you can screw right into it as if it was a stud. So when you're hanging like sheetrock, whatever, down in the basement wall, in the interior, doing stuff on the exterior, like it just bolts right up. Super cool. Um, so as far as putting everything together, once you got them all stacked and they're all clipped together, then you got to put in some rebar. Um, so you got to figure out which side is your tension side, which side is going to be trying to pull apart. So um, tons of videos out there on that. Uh, so I'll just show an example like here. So uh, you go on the outer and you can alternate between this outer clip, inner clip, and it's usually going to be one side or the other half, depending on where your tension side of the wall is. And you literally just push down and pop that right into place and they'll just seat inside of there. 
and your rebar is done. That's it. That's it. You put little J's in the corner. I'll show you those here in a minute. Put some vertical pieces down in here. You tie them off, right? Once it's all set up, I've still got to do that out on this thing yet. Uh, and the rebar piece is taken care of, so you don't have to be an expert in tying rebar and spacing it and everything else to make this work. And then every, on the second row, and then every two to three courses after that, so on a usual wall, you have two layers of this stuff. So it's just a wire mesh with these cross ties every eight inches, with li which lines up with these plastic braces in here. Um, this really just helps stiffen up the whole wall system, uh, like from pushing, so laterally. And you just you put it in there, you line up the metal braces with the plastic braces and then this you'll actually pop down with a mallet. So you just kind of pop this in there, super loud. Right. But that's it. And uh, you do that all the way around, you got corners and that's one like rebar slides out. One intact ICS form or ICF uh, insulated concrete form wall section and uh, just move on to the next one you stack them and go so easy. Uh, so yeah I just wanted to take a minute to kind of show a visual of what that looks like I'm going to go take you to show you the corner pieces and then a the t-strap so if you've got a place where one row tees up against another you want that all to be an integral or integrated pour and there's a way to do that and I'll show you with these t-straps here in just a minute so right here I've got the straps on the outside, this section of wall butts into this section of wall. So this is where the main part of the house is right here. So it goes that way and it's just a square. And then this is the porch section that ties in. So these T-straps, there's one on either side and top and bottom of each block. If you can look in here. So there's one right there. So there's some rebar in there and it just literally hooks right onto the rebar like that and then you pull it tight you put the screw in at an angle and it just draws all that tight and that is not going anywhere that doesn't go anywhere and you do that again on the bottom so each course has two uh, it's just tied right into the rebar and now you cut out the center so this was cut out in here and that's all one channel that fills in with concrete and it's done <laughs> it's so easy uh, there's another set over there and then uh, I'm about to show you probably one of the more impressive parts of this whole system is the bracing so none of this is filled with concrete yet none of this is filled with concrete yet uh, but there's these vertical posts here and you just tie those right into those plastic studs that I was talking about. So each one of these just has three regular, like, Torx head screws. One, two, three of those. And that's it. And then these braces are staked into the ground at an angle so that the braces don't walk up. And there's a turnbuckle on here. So you just turn this with the screw and it adjusts the wall in and out. Uh, and then there's these brace mounts here for scaffold and this is uh, you know like I can get up here and I can shimmy this around and it like doesn't go it doesn't move this stuff is so impressive and you just walk around it's super sturdy so we'll be able to stand up here and pour down into the wall just like that and uh, yeah there's the T here's the corner I was talking about so right there's a little L shape and you span across two sets of webbing on that side and on that side uh, and you got to tie those in apparently uh, they like to move when you pour the concrete so those got to be set but uh, yeah I mean I can walk around the entire perimeter no problem right corners you can see the mesh here on the top and then if I can get you down zoomed in there two courses down you can see right there is the other set so, and the clips are all in there. It cuts really easy. We use the circular saw, uh, but blacking a circular saw, you can use um, just a regular hand saw 
really kind of DIY friendly. That is the Nudura ICF walls and then those will all get filled with concrete. The walls stay and then we move on to uh, filling with dirt and then pouring the slab on top of it. 